What is caviar? You've obviously heard the word, but do you know what it means? Most of us just know it as something expensive that we can't afford. But in reality, caviar is salt cured, unfertilized eggs that come exclusively from the sturgeon family of fish. But that's just a bunch of words. It's time to take a field trip to figure out how caviar is really made. Actually, before I go, like the video. I'm going to meet up with a group of Russians and cutting into the ovaries of fish to show you how to make caviar. Russians don't f around. At the very least, I think we've earned the like on this video. Let's go to Miami. All right, so we're in the car now. I'm actually in Miami and we're headed to the caviar facility. We don't have the typical camera guy behind the camera today, but instead we got Abe driving and we got the Golden Balance riding shotgun and recording. We're one minute away from the farm and we'll see you there in a second. How are you, Nick? Nikita Good. and David, these are the caviar superstars, right? You guys know everything there is to know about caviar. Should we do this? Let's do it. Let's go. Before we get started, yeah. let's suit up, get our hair nets on, and some it. caviar. All right, so we're really suited up right now. You do this every time. Every time. You have to, obviously. Have to. Obviously, we're not at the farm right now. The farm is up further up in Florida. Up in Florida, yeah. And it's, it's about an eight hour drive. Can you give us like a brief overview of the farm really quickly? Like what does yeah. that look like? So the farm started in 2001 and our original intent was um, to start this farm to grow sustainable sturgeon and to reproduce the wild uh, in the future. Uh, because in the late 1990s, there was a huge decline in the wild population of sturgeon species. So we flew these species over on 13 trains. From the flight from the Caspian Sea. You flew them all on planes. All on planes. In so, water. Yeah, so they were broodstock fish, oh may, meaning that they were the original bloodline fish of purebred beluga, uh, sabruga, sterlet in the Caspian Sea. Every that fish is. came in, in uh, little aquariums um, across uh, Lufthansa Airlines, and then in this one farm, which we started reproducing and became the world's largest farm for five different species of sturgeon. The Rolls Royce of sturgeon. Do you hear that? They flew first class, too. They flew first class? They flew first class. <laughs> they now you've got some of the fish right so out here. here. Yeah, we have, so we're gonna be producing caviar today out of an albino sterlet and also a regular sterlet right here. These are from 2018. Um, it takes about a year, year and a half, like year and a half to two years for them to produce caviar. So these fish went through a reabsorption stage, meaning that in that year and a half, once it reached the fifth stage of uh, maturity, it reabsorbed all of its eggs and then it reproduced eggs in that kind of uh, three fourths to a year. How rare is the albino sturgeon? So albino sturgeon, you can say that in say, a thousand fish that are produced, yeah. maybe like three or four of them will be albino. Does that sell for more, I assume, too? Correct, yeah. Is so it? it's like, it's like uh, almost three times the value. Each fish has its own bag okay. so that we don't uh, cross the different ovaries okay. with one another. All of the caviars are going to be different in color. All of them are going to be different in size. This is much bolder than this is in color. This is a little bit more That's pale. Insane. Can I touch it? Yeah, of course. That's amazing. This is uh, raw ovaries. Does a fish have to be pregnant to have caviar? Well, that are, those are the stages of the fish, so yes. Okay, so anytime you're eating caviar, Caviar is from a female Correct. sturgeon. Correct. Only sturgeon can produce caviar. Is that correct? Yeah, caviar is a word for like roe. So roe can come from pike, can come from salmon, can come from tobacco, flying fish roe. Okay. Um, generally speaking, black caviar comes from sturgeon species. So the first thing, yeah, you see there's two ovaries. I'm gonna put one back. You never wanna start with a lot. In an ovary, you'll see how there's a back end to an ovary, which still has like a plasma on it. You always wanna go to the open part. So you see where mm -hmm. it's open right here? Kind of put that open side down. So I always start with a, like a piece and I always just give it a nice little gentle kind of rotation like that. And you're coaxing the eggs off the plasma Correct. right now. That's amazing. So once um, the entire ovary, majority of the caviar has been extracted from it, you will see it's more just like a plasma and then there's just little eggs everywhere. You don't want to apply that pressure, but you simply just want to rotate it like that. And you can see how the caviar is gently coming off of it. You're trusting me to do this? Yeah, do it in this one though. Let's see if I watch your instructions carefully. So essentially, I first want to lay this down to like get my orientation right. And then slowly with like one corner. I apply pressure for a little like this. And you're going to feel the pressure. Like if you see eggs on the sieve, that are already broken, you know you're applying too much pressure, so that's good. I'm, I'm doing okay. Yeah, yeah. This is one of those things I feel like that shows you why caviar is such an expensive thing, among other things, right? Is like that delicate touch that's needed to get them properly out. Oh, I don't want to whack it though, probably. Do I? That's okay? Yeah. Do you want to try? Let's do it. Yeah, get in there. See if he has the proper touch. He's a little yeah. bit stronger than me, but do you have the light touch? I do have the light takes? touch, yeah. We'll see. If at this very moment you had to pick one of the two of us as an employee, do you have an idea yet or who you'd pick? Camera <laughs> 
So sturgeon species are actually the oldest living species in today's world. They go all the way back to dinosaur era. They do kind of have like that, I don't know, what's a rhinoceros. The spinal cord, the spinal cord on them, yeah, exactly. Okay. And it feels like you're touching an organ even though I've never touched an organ. An organ, yes. like a human organ. Like a human organ. So in here, like if you want to pick out what I do is you see those little red marks, there's one here, one yeah. here, little red ones, and I just take them like that. Just uh, to get it perfectly. I'll put, and I'll put it in, I put them on here. Oh, that's what this is for. Yeah, and then I'll throw them away. So out of uh, five or six of the steps that we're going to take to finally get the mature product, yes, this is the second step, okay. which is uh, rinsing out the eggs. You're going to rinse at least five times here okay. until the water is very clear and okay. you don't see any dead particles floating. I'm going to rinse them out. And they're already super clean. Scrape the bottom so that way you don't pop the eggs. So you can just pick them all up just like that. Uh, so we're gonna take our weights and units a measure of kilos. Okay. So you're weighing right now to know how much salt to add to the caviar. Correct. So I put seven eight right there, so it's perfect. Sure. Salt and just kind of spread it everywhere. And we're gonna let it sit for five minutes and you're gonna see the process of osmosis happen, which is all these little bubbles are gonna start forming on top of the caviar. Now we're just simply gonna drain off all the excess water wow. the caviar, so you wanna spread. You see it got a little bit more drier like that. Why did it get brighter yellow? It's almost like a lemon yellow now as opposed yeah, to- Yeah, I mean the colors, like I said, when the salt hits in, the colors change, the size might change a little bit, might get a little larger. So that right there is ready to eat caviar. Correct. This is the uh, traditional way in Russia to have caviar. Yes, so you take a, a bump of caviar and then in Russia, you would take a bump of vodka. In America, we like to serve it here with some champagne. Cheers, thank you. Cheers. Here we go. Oh my God. Wow. Amazing. I have the creaminess of, of avocado. Yeah. It's the fattiness. Remind me of Pop Rocks. Why? You know, Pop Rocks, the one you put on your tongue. How they pop in your mouth. How, as an expert, would you describe that bite? Soft, um, kind of firm texture to the egg, because it's a small roll. Very nutty, creamy. <laughs> and buttery flavor profile. Now, after salting, we get into the process of packing it up into our jars. These are one ounce jars, so 28 grams go into here. And how much would that jar cost, I'm curious? This jar is about 320. It's gonna sit in this jar for a couple of weeks before we uh, you know, put it uh, up for sale. And we're gonna put it into a vacuum machine and get all the air out of there. So it really preserves the quality. Listen to the sound right now. This will get all of the air out of them. Oh, so this is the sealed tin now, and you can hear there's not much of a noise there anymore. The first one was the albino, which is what we started with. Correct. This is the black sturgeon. So this is a normal uh, sterlet that we had, the sturgeon. So of course the caviar is gonna be kind of uh, common to what you know Whoa. people usually get and see. So this is gonna have very nice platinum oh gray, God. kind of blackish color to the caviar. It's like a matte itself. gray. It, it, is, it is very creamy. You can, you can see it's more fatty, the ovary itself. Most of the imperfections you're picking out of here are blood clots, is that correct? Or yes, no? and leftover tissue. Leftover tissue and, and blood clots. And ovaries, yeah. We're just gonna pour it onto the sieve and drain it. So we're gonna try before salting this time, which is- Very we... earthy. You're gonna have more of a texture to it, more of a pop. There's no salt to it, so it's gonna be creamy and earthy flavors. Straight up caviar. Straight up. Looks the same, obviously, as it does after it's salted. There you go. It smells like nothing. It's really It's like an almost bluish gray. Wow, that's completely different. The, the first flavor that jumped to mind that time for me was like a liver. I don't know why. It was super, super earthy, almost like a little bit mealy. Is that because there's very no salt gamey, yet? Very gamey, very gamey. Is that because there's no salt? There's no salt yet. Yeah. That's and why it's though? Just straight, oh, it's just straight rub. It has the slight flavor of the ocean to it, obviously. Very little bit, but it's but very earthy, much yet. very earthy flavor. That is so weird how much salt transforms caviar, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Oh, 
It's just, um, it's really good quality. So here's a 1.8 uh, kilo tin of uh, caviar that was freshly harvested at the farm. And these are the original tins that we put them in to mature for a long period of time before we open it up and we repack into smaller sizes from this tin right here. Oh, okay. So welcome to the warehouse. We'll go down this way and we'll go out to the caviar processing room where we have the caviar ready for us. So it's, it's all sitting in there maturing right now? Yeah, a lot of it's maturing, a lot of it's pre-packed, yeah. Wow. This so fridge is probably it. worth what? Many houses. This is insane. This is um, some albino that I actually produced at the farm. This was produced on October 11th. And it's sitting in there in the salt maturing. Exactly, yes. I wow. like to uh, mature caviar for at least two months, two or three months before we kind of sell it. Now that we harvest our own caviar, I say, uh, you know, we sit down and we do a nice proper tasting. Let's, let's do, do it. A couple other varieties. Cool. So let's first start off all the way here on the right hand side. This is an Almas from an albino sturgeon. It's from a sturlet. It produces very small eggs, very buttery, sharp ocean-like flavors, and creamy. Next you have is the uh, Russian Ocetra. This comes a farm raised from Israel, and the eggs are much larger in size, very buttery, neutral in flavor, nutty aftertaste. The third option here we have is a white sturgeon from California, and the white sturgeon much more jet black in color than the Ocetra, you can tell, and it's gonna have much more of a creamy, kind of earthy, uh, lingering, nutty, buttery notes on them as well. Very neutral. Then we have a Siberian sturgeon. This one I love a lot because it's very complex, yet all flavors really come together. You have earthiness, you have umami flavors, and then you have your buttery and ocean-like flavors as well. And lastly, this is salmon roe. So salmon roe comes from a salmon and very nice large eggs on it. So you have a beautiful pop and when those eggs pop, it's almost like a smoked salmon kind of flavor just running through your mouth. So we use a mother of pearl spoon because it's home to the sea. Since caviar is so delicate, if you use anything that's containing any silver or metal, the metallic taste will transfer over to the caviar in a split second or two. We tried it almost already. Let's go into an Ocetra. This is uh, more of an amberish uh, color Ocetra. Gold is going to be in the in between this and the almas. So you're going to have really nice golden hues bouncing off of the eggs. This is more of an amberish note, greenish, yellowish colors to it. First thing you'll... Uh... Oh, you're putting it on your hand again. Oh, that's smart. I like the whole hand thing. Also, this part of your hand is um, it's a natural palette, so you have no added taste whatsoever. It's also a really warm spot. So like I I mentioned before when you eat caviar you eat it too cold you're not going to experience all the flavor profiles coming out of it right away all set boom fish bomb mm. Mm. Creamy. That's my favorite one. Very traditional. Yeah, that's really tasty. They're all so different so yeah. far. Now the white sturgeon. So it's called the white sturgeon, but the caviar isn't specifically white. It's still, you know, black colored, grayish notes to it. This one is going to be more of a neutral note to it. Earthy, nutty. Of all these here, what's your favorite as I get going to get this one? Um, probably the Siberian sturgeon we have, which is going to be the next one we'll be trying. To the firmness of the pop. That's really good. That actually might be my favorite so far. The next one here, we have a Siberian sturgeon. So this is one of my favorites because of its complexity. You have kind of flavors from an Ocetra, from a white sturgeon. Eggs are very nice and large in size. The pearls on this one are beautiful. They're huge, right? You can see on my hand, this one holds extremely well, oh, right? Yeah. Oh wow, that's that's the best one. It's really creamy. It's actually a very kind of mellow, subtle taste. There's no sharp bite at the end of it yeah, at all. Yeah. It's really creamy. If you were to have this first, you would have a nice umami sharpness to it. Got it. There's something about the pearls on that one too, that they're so big and well-defined that they pop a little bit better in your mouth on that one, which very is really delicate. fun. Very delicate. Cool. And then salmon. Lastly, yeah, salmon roll. So the last one here is salmon. This is basically a giant smoked salmon flavored boba, and it's gonna pop and go crazy. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Mm. It's much more liquid than anything we've tasted today. Yeah, it's a larger rub. So basically this whole line right here is all sturgeon caviars and this is him. I wanted to say that's kind of a thing that I was confused about. And I think a lot of people are. Much of caviar is from sturgeon and they're just all different types of sturgeon not different types of fish. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an important distinction. Correct, right? yes. Right? So this is another traditional way of serving caviar on a Russian blini with a dollop of creme fraiche. That was crazy. Thank you guys so much, seriously, for having us. Pleasure. That was a lot of fun. A crazy caviar journey. Hopefully we can come to the farm next time. We've had a lot of field trips at this point, and I would say that one was the most unique so far. I mean, how many people in their lifetimes get to see anything like that? I'm really glad I could take you along with me. And to all of you watching, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next field trip. Those who have been along for the ride this entire time can tell you that these are always very crazy. They sent me home with a lot of caviar, so it's time to go eat.